Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Mobile App Academy. This is our live building series where we show you how to build and configure mobile apps on the mobile platform. My name is David Ha, and I'm an outbound product manager here at ServiceNow, and I'll be your host for today's session. I want to give a warm welcome to everyone joining us here live today. And if you're joining us for the first time, welcome to the session. Uh, we're here to provide uh, guidance, best practices, and answer any questions that do come up along the way. And we do host these academies every two weeks at 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, in which our recordings will be posted onto YouTube on the ServiceNow and Now community channel. Um, just want to point out a few resources that we do have available. If you are new to mobile, um, we recommend that you check out some of our self annuement resources, such as our mobile guidebooks and white papers. Um, and we also have a plethora of other resources, such as labs, mobile trainings on now learning, uh, as well as our playlist to all the other previous app academies where you can find sessions like uh, Mobile Asian Quick Start Guide, getting started with now mobile and 30 over 30 other academies. But just to quickly review our schedule for today, um, this will be a very quick 20 minute session. We'll start it off with a quick overview, our goals for today, what we will implement and how to get started. And then we'll jump into the exercise. Today, we're gonna to be building an input form screen with uh, using reference qualifier inputs, um, inputs and fields like assigned to and so forth, right? And then we'll open up to some Q and A. Uh, along the way, feel free to post any questions you have in the chat. Um, uh, also, if you are looking for more hands-on training uh, in case uh, uh, you're a bit newer to mobile, uh, I do recommend that you check out our now learning uh, course called Mobile Use Baseline Functions, um, as well as some of our earlier app academies, which you can find on our community site. If you're not quite up to speed on today's topic, uh, you can start by watching our Getting Started with Input Form Screens on YouTube. And uh, those are great resources to get started on learning how to use input form screens, why they're um, why we moved over from action items, uh, UI parameters and item parameters over to input form screens, and then how to build those native functions. Okay, but with that all said, let's jump into our overview. Okay, so input form screens, this is what we use to build native actions for users uh, with various input types. Right, you have input types such as string, number, boolean, date, time, choice, uh, and of course you have reference qualifiers as well. Today we will be building an input form screen using reference inputs. Uh, these are used to filter and restrict data that gets returned to that end user. Um, and so, if you're filling out fields like the assigned to, it's only going to show you a subset of all available values based on that reference field. And for the assigned to, it's referencing the assignment group. So. If you were to select an assignment group like NorCal technicians, it will only show you the assignees who are in that NorCal technician region, right? Um, and for today's session, we're actually going to be using a field service technician use case as an example. Um, uh, as technicians are auditing their stock rooms, they'll scan assets to confirm their inventory. But for assets that don't show up, they'll need to create new asset records. And so we're going to build a create asset function that allows my agents to fill out the model, the model category, and asset tags of those new assets. Okay. And uh, just a quick note, this is a recorded, um, we do have this uh, short 10-minute implementation video that will take us through this. Uh, so let me go and pull this up and we'll get started. Hi, I'm Ian Kinnear from the Outbound Enablement team. And in this session, I'd like to walk you through advanced reference qualifiers on mobile. This is something that's been available since the Rome release, but it's a very common question, so we'll review it again here. The good news is that as long as your fields are set up properly on platform with a working advanced reference qualifier, mobile will simply leverage that. Here's an example, a hardware asset new record form with model category and model fields on it. Here we can see that if we were to just select the model directly, we've got a huge list to select from. However, if we first select a model category, such as a printer, that model list is going to be automatically filtered by that model category selection in the other field. How that's set up, you can take a look at. So this is a dictionary entry for the model field. You can see an advanced reference qualifier here. It's gonna leverage the model and category filters script include, 
and in there a function called asset model ref qual, and it's passing in the current record context. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up our mobile app asset lookup function, which is available in field service to also allow the user to create a new asset. And we're going to create these model and model category fields. So let's first access our mobile app builder. And under functions, we'll click new. We'll call it create asset SD lab function. And in this case, we'll make the context global since we won't be in the context of a specific record when we enter into this function. Create a new action item, which we can call create asset SD lab action item. We'll give it a new type so we can create a new asset. The table is going to be hardware. We'll skip over field values for a second because we still have to create our input form screen. So we'll click new here. Make a new input form screen. And here we're going to scroll down to the input form page display. And to better illustrate this example, we'll put all of our inputs on one page. So we'll click on custom page and section setup. We'll skip over, over inputs and variables and go down to pages and create a new page. Name doesn't matter. So let's call it this. Give it an order of 10. We'll click save just so it's available back on our input form screen. We'll go ahead and start creating our inputs next. So based on what we just saw on the platform side, we'll want a model category and model field at least. So let's start with model category. This is gonna be an input type reference, obviously. We'll make it mandatory, give it an order of 10. And we'll scroll down and put it on that page that we just created. And since it's a reference field, we need those two input attributes for reference fields require at a minimum, the source table and source field name. So we'll click new here. We'll find our source table. This is going to be the hardware field. Click back onto our input and make it new input attribute called source field name. And for this, we'll first select the table so that we can select the fields, model category. Now we'll click back over to our input form screen and add the model. So we'll find our inputs, click new, call this model and give it a label. It will also be a reference field, given an order of 20, and we can make it mandatory as well. Scroll down and select the page that we had created previously. And same as the model category, we'll add these two input attributes. First one's going to be the source table, which again is going to be hardware. Click back to the input, create a second attribute. This one is going to be the source field name. And for this, we'll identify the table where we can find that field, which is again the hardware table. And scroll down and select the model. 
Now, lastly, just to fill out this input form, we'll go ahead and create an asset tag field because that's how we're searching by to find a particular asset. So we'll scroll down to our inputs on the input form screen and click new. And we'll create a field called asset tag, give it a label. This one can stay a string, give it an order of 30. And same as the other two fields, we'll add it to that same page. This one doesn't need any input attributes. So we're pretty much ready to go with our function. We can click save, but we just need to add it to our asset lookup screen so that after we search for an asset, we can tap into that function. So we'll click over to our main mobile app builder screen and select screens. I'm going to look for asset lookup, the list screen, just here. Now this will take a few seconds to load. So I'll just explain what we're going to do after it loads. All we're going to need to do is on the list screen, top level configuration, find the top menu functions and add a new function instance. Which you can give a label like create hardware asset and point it to the specific function that we just created. So let's quickly do that. Make sure we're on our asset lookup list screen. Scroll down to our top menu function instances. Click new. Give it a name and a label like create hardware asset. We can give it an order. There's only one function instance in this top menu, but it's good practice to give it an order in case we add more. Then we'll scroll down to the bottom and choose our function. So we'll search for it, select it here and click apply. And now we can save and we should be ready to test it out. But before we do, there's one other piece we need to do in order to complete our function. So let's tap back to our main menu in Mobile App Builder, click on Functions, find our function and open it up. And then we'll click on our action item. And here we'll just scroll down and identify the field values that are gonna be updated when the user submits the form. And we can do that now because we created our three inputs. So first one is model category. We'll select it from our data pill selector here. Next is the model. And last is the asset tag. Just be careful here because it's a string field, it'll automatically put a space in here. So in case that happens, just click into the field and make sure there's no space and click save. So now let's look over at our mobile device, refresh the screen and we'll scroll over and select our asset lookup. Now this is going to open up the camera for you to scan, but we can also tap into the function and search for an asset tag that we know won't be there. So in this case, I searched for A2. And we can also see that we have our top menu function available. And as expected, we didn't find anything. So we'll go ahead and create a hard where asset, and we can see the three fields we configured. Same as on platform, if I was to tap directly into the model, I'm gonna see the full list here. But if I first select the model category and select the printer, then select the model, 
you can see it's leveraged that advanced reference qualifier and it's filtered that model list. So we can select one. We'll put in that asset tag that we searched for. Tap submit. And you can see we got our new asset created. So that's all you need to do in order to leverage your advanced reference qualifiers in the mobile app. So that wraps up our Academy for today. If you found this session helpful, please let us know in our post session survey. And uh, thank you all for joining us today. And we hope to see you again in two weeks at our next Academy.